Hey everybody, Mike here with everythingaboutconcrete.com. This video is about co a concrete patio, a concrete sidewalk, and a concrete entryway. I'm going to show you how we form it, how we pour it, and how we finish it. Hey, if you're new to this channel, my name's Mike Day. I own Day's Concrete Floors Incorporated. We specialize in all kinds of concrete flat work. We do concrete patios, sidewalks, pool decks, concrete floors, concrete slabs, a lot of stamp concrete, a lot of concrete repair. So if you like that kind of stuff, go ahead down there and hit subscribe now and hit the little bell notification so you'll be updated on all my new videos. I come out with a couple a week and you won't miss one if you hit the little bell notification. So what we're doing here is we're forming up this concrete patio. This was about 20 by 10 and then the sidewalk part you see down there is about 40 feet by 5 feet. And then there's a little entryway right in front of the camera that you can't see yet. That was about 5x5 five five that we're going to set up and pour also. So as you can see, we're putting styrofoam under this. And where we live here in Maine, you know, the reason we put styrofoam under a lot of our exterior concrete is to help prevent the frost from getting under it and lifting it, heaving it. We have about four months of winter here, so our concrete goes through a lot of freeze and thaw cycles. And the styrofoam just helps insulate the ground so the frost can't get down under the concrete. As you can see, the patio is going to have thickened edges. It's like a, a mini haunch slab. So the edge is going to be about 12 inches thick, and the middle is going to be about 6 inches thick. So we're getting that first form set. We've got to make sure it's in place, square to the building, and set to grade. And that's kind of our starting point for forming the rest of that little patio. I like that. I'm using that Topcon. That's an RL5B laser. It's a self-leveling laser. Um, I find I've used that for years. I've, this is probably the third or fourth one I've had in, in 39 years. That's the easiest laser I find to use for uh, this kind of work. You can see what we got those two sides on. Girls are putting a string on so we can finish pinning it, keeping it straight. We do a lot of setup. We do a lot of our own forming. Um, and, and then that way we know it's the way we want it. And when we show up to pour, you know, we don't have to adjust anything. We got it perfect. When you pour thickened slabs like this, you got to really make sure those forms are braced well, or when you pour it, the concrete's just going to push the forms out. So if you don't do a lot of pouring, and you just do forming, it's hard to know just how many braces to put on that stuff. So we're down there getting that five foot sidewalk set up. It's kind of like a concrete apron and a sidewalk all in one. This is a brewery. These guys make beer. And we have a lot of these in Maine. Um, how many of you guys like beer? Put beer down there in the comments for me. But it, or how many of you guys have breweries in your state? I think Maine is one of the highest per capita brewery states in the United States. Is that there are breweries everywhere? So the girls are finishing putting up that styrofoam in, cutting around that pipe, uh, fitting in all the little pieces they need to. We're putting the wire mesh in here for reinforcement. This is a heavy gauge wire mesh. They make two gauges. One's a light gauge and one's a heavy gauge. And this one called for the heavy gauge wire mesh. Which kind of takes the place, almost takes the place of a rebar mat. You can see we got some rebar there too, sitting on the ground. We're going to wet set that. And what I mean is when we pour the concrete like this. We're going to just set that down in around the edges so we know it's only three or four inches from the top. We, we also use a 4,000 PSI concrete for all our exterior concrete. And I almost always put the fiber mesh reinforcement in it also, so it's got two types of reinforcement. We put that ISO, we call that ISO strip or zip strip up against the foundation too so the concrete doesn't bond to the foundation because the foundation is not going to move. That's down below the frost line. 
if this slab ever did want to move, you know, we want it to be independent of that foundation. That's what that ISO strip is for. Now we're pouring the concrete. We're probably pouring about a five inch slump. This does slope away from the building. Probably about an inch on that five foot section and about two inches on this 10 foot section. So, you know, we got to keep the slump fairly dry so it'll hold the slope. We're going to end up putting, a, as you'll see at the end of the video, we're going to put a broom finish on this. We're going to cut in some grooves and we're going to edge it. So stay tuned for that. I got a new tool I'm using for cutting my grooves and another new tool we're using to help us mag float the surface out before we broom it. So you're going to want to check that out. So we're pulling up the wire as we go. I got the wire puller right there. Pouring the concrete. Darren and Luke are back there straight edging it. Getting it leveled out, bull floating it. Those blue, those blue rakes we're using, all those come alongs are they have an octagon handle. They're really strong and they're really lightweight. They're aluminum. I got those from Marshalltown. I'll have a link down in the description, guys, for all these tools that we use. If you guys want to check them out. Marshalltown makes some really good tools. All right, we're getting this thing poured out and getting it leveled out. As you can see that's a pretty stiff slump. We want to make sure that, number one, it doesn't sag because it's got a two-inch pitch right there. And we just don't want a lot of bleed water also when after this stuff's poured, you know, when you got styrofoam under it, there's no place for the mixed water to go but but up and evaporate out of the surface. So we don't if you, the wetter you pour it, the more bleed water you get. And we just don't want to have to deal with too much bleed water when we're finishing. You can see Darren's bull floating that. Now we're gonna straight edge this this patio area we like those those are magnesium straight edges too those are really strong really lightweight and they're they're really flat so I mean those are a lot better than using like a 2x4 or a 2x6 all together this took about this took about 20 yards of concrete to do all this that was that patio was pretty thick. That, that sucked up a lot of concrete, especially those edges. See Luke, Luke's making sure the wire's up there in the middle. Girls do a good job spreading the concrete, leveling it out for us. They're just learning, but they're picking it up really fast. See, I'm setting that rebar in there. The key to doing a good job is just taking your time, making sure everything's right. You know, we want to make sure those boards stay really straight. That's what the string is for on top. We can keep checking ourselves. You can see all the braces we got, plus we backfilled it with dirt. Keep those boards nice and straight. There's that little entryway. So we, we drilled and pinned that. That's the main door into this building. And we wanted to guarantee that that slab never lifted. If it did lift even a half, three quarters of an inch, you wouldn't be able to open that door. So that's why we drilled and pinned that little section and we put the styrofoam under it. Yeah, we'll put that styrofoam up so we wouldn't splatter against the door there. Putting the rebar in the edges. Just to help strengthen the edges up a little bit. Yeah, Abby's magging the edge. She's just learning how to mag. 
that's not as easy as it looks all right we'll get that bowl floated off get it smooth and then I'm gonna show you how we're gonna finish this thing we're really liking that bowl float. that's a new bowl float we got from Marshalltown so here's one of my new tools for cutting in grooves this walk behind groover you see it's got a little almost like a, a bolt on the front of it that you can line your mark up with we put a mark up there on the building and I can just eye that and get that perfectly straight it's just by using that walk behind with those handles so we'll get that groove cut in before you know we had to wait for the concrete to dry up a little bit then we we put a straight edge down and I'd cut it in by hand if, if you've seen me in some of my other videos this thing you can cut the grooves in a little earlier and get ahead of the game so we're really liking this groover they have these walk behind groovers on at Marshalltown also another company that sells these is uh, Cadillac concrete products they're from Canada you could check that out too We put these grooves in for a couple reasons. You know, one reason is for aesthetics to make it look nice. And another reason, the main reason is, you know, to help control cracks. So we don't have to saw this. Those grooves will help control any cracking too. So this is the other new tool we're using is this, this called a funny float. It's a mag float with a handle that you can use to mag out the surface and get out all the imperfections the bull float lines bring up more of the cream before you do the finishing process so it allows you to to get out on the concrete without having to use knee boards or skids to do it so we're just learning how to use this thing too and again I'll have a link for that down in the description this thing's working out really nice we've used it on a few jobs now we're really liking it couldn't get too good around that pipe so I had to reach out you can see how Luke can reach right out there 10 or 12 feet pretty easily and get that magged out whereas before we'd have to wait for the concrete to get hard enough to get out on it with knee boards takes a little bit of getting used to just like anything but once you get used to it it's pretty easy to use now once we mag float it out we re cut in our grooves to make sure our grooves are really clean looking you can see the sun's coming around the building that corners in the sun so the concrete's going to dry a lot faster in the sun than it is in the shade so we got to make sure that we stay right up with it that's why we're brooming that little piece right now that corner was drying pretty fast so we just got to keep working it as the Sun starts coming around and stay ahead of it you can see the Sun is coming on those those braces we have those kickers it's almost to the edge of the slab Luke's going over that a second time. Finishing concrete's really an art. I mean, it takes a while to get used to knowing the timing of the finishing. Timing is everything when it comes to finishing. And, you know, knowing how to solve problems like when half of the slab is in the sun and half is in the shade, how do you deal with that? The shade is a lot wetter than the sun part. So how do you blend it all in to make it look nice and you know there's no there's no easy answer see how half of that patios in the Sun half is in the shade other than the experience and knowledge of just doing it and feeling it so we'll have to Luke's gonna have to get on that Sun part and wipe that out with knee boards before we do the shade part and we may even have to broom that Sun that's in the part that's in the Sun first and then come back and broom the part that's in the shade to blend it in and you can see that front edge of that is getting in the sun it's just stuff you have to deal with and learn if you're new you can see how he's magging that sun part out 
Darren's recutting that groove in, making sure it's nice and clean. So, it, I mean, those knee boards are a must if you're going to finish concrete, guys, like this. I mean, I wouldn't use anything other than those knee boards um, for the final finishing process, especially if you're half in the sun, half in the shade. The That funny float does work really good initially, but once the concrete starts to dry up a little bit, there's nothing that compares to the the downward pressure you can use from your body and your arms to float out the surface of the concrete and get it ready for brooming. So I was able to broom both that shade and the sun at the same time. It had been sitting long enough to, to look really good when I broomed it. If not, you know, if the sun had already been shining on this as we were pouring, I might have had to broom the, the sun part first and wait for that shade a little bit. See, the girls are putting the finished edger mark on. They're getting good at that, so that's saving us some time from having to go back and do that. Luke's getting that last square magged out. And then we'll, you know, we put the finishing marks on the grooves, finishing marks on the edger. Now, I took over that from the girls because that part in the sun, that edge in the sun was really, really firm and hard. And if you're just learning, that's kind of tricky getting that finish edge mark in there. So now what we're doing is we're going to put the finish tool mark on those edges. You can see how I'm using the mag in one hand, or Luke's using the mag, and then he's reaching out, putting the groove mark in there. And then we're brooming back over where he's reaching out. Yeah, you got to have those mags. See all those different, we got all different mag floats. I mean, everybody has their own preferences, but it's nice to have a variety. And then we're using that two foot broom too today. That's really light. You can reach out really far with that. We clean that broom every other time we broom too. So I'll, I'll take a couple passes with the broom. I'll dip it in a bucket of water, clean off all the paste, bump out all the excess water, and then I'll broom it again. So that's how we form, pour, and finish a concrete patio with a sidewalk, guys, in a little entryway. Again, I'll have all the tools down in the description if you want to check them out. And if you want to learn how to do this stuff, I got a, I got a course down in the description where I teach you guys how to do the forming, the pouring, and the finishing. So again, thanks for watching, guys. Go ahead down here and hit subscribe, and I'll see you on the next video.